In your headlines, law enforcement continues to work towards combating gun crime. The Turks and Caicos Islands has been nominated eight World Travel Awards. And the Ephesus and Blue Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church is making their presence felt in the community. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales, delivering the latest from across the country this Thursday, March 17th, 2022, right to your door. News Watch starts now. In today's top story, law enforcement speaks on the brazen increase in armed robberies and shooting deaths to have taken place within the last weeks as officials continue to work towards combating gun crime through the gun amnesty program. Here's that report. Calling the increased number of serious and violent crimes senseless and unacceptable, Chief of Police Trevor Bodding says the last five days has seen a horrific display of vicious, brutal attacks on humankind with four robberies, five shootings and three murders in under a week, bringing the country's homicide toll to four for 2022. Officials spoke of four armed robberies that took place on March 11th, all within a span of 90 minutes in different locations across Provo, namely Grace Bay, Glass Shack, and Venetian Road. Newswatch also learned of another a day before at the well south dock of a mother and her adult children. Fortunately, none of the victims were seriously injured during the commission of those crimes. Hours into days later, the crimes would become even more barbaric, having reported the shooting of two young men in two separate attacks. Police say they believe these incidents were targeted, believed to be motivated by revenge. Early Saturday, a shooting at the Provo landfill was also reported. A 48-year-old man was shot and taken to hospital where he underwent emergency surgery. However, he died days later. This incident was followed by yet another shooting on Mary Jane Lane, where police discovered the lifeless body of a man they say may have been involved in serious criminal activity. And finally, the latest, what police believe to be another robbery, this time turned murder at the well in South Dock as a father was shot to death. Police say the man posed no threat to the criminals and was senselessly taken away from his family. In light of this despicable increase in crime, police are assuring the public that they are doing all they can to combat not just gun crime, but all petty and serious acts persisting throughout the country. The gun amnesty program is still in effect until March 31st, and everyone is being asked to participate. If you know the whereabouts of any illegal firearms or persons who may possess them, you are asked to come forward as the life you save may be your very own. Tips are anonymous. The Turks and Caicos Islands has been nominated for not one, two, or three, but eight distinguished World Travel Awards. Here are the details. The World Travel Awards celebrates its 29th anniversary this year, and as a result, they award and celebrate excellence across all key sectors of the travel, tourism, and hospitality industries. The World Travel Awards brand is recognized globally as the ultimate hallmark of industry excellence. Over the years, the Turks and Caicos have won numerous World Travel Awards, and it is with hope that the destination will win the award in the various coveted categories. The categories are as follows. Caribbean's Leading Beach Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Cruise Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Dive Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Honeymoon Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Luxury Island Destination 2022, Caribbean's Leading Tourist Board 2022, and Caribbean's Most Romantic Destination 2022. We gather that the international voting window for Caribbean and North America regions opened on Tuesday, March 15th, and runs until midnight on Tuesday, the 3rd of May. Votes can be cast by travel professionals, media, and tourism consumers, with the nominee gaining the most votes in each category announced as the 2022 World Travel Awards winner. Director of Tourism Ms. Pamela Ewing stated that 
To be nominated for not just one, but eight awards is truly momentous. This gives credence to the work that we in the Turks and Caicos have been doing over the past year and will continue to do. It is indeed an honor that we were nominated for so many, and I'm truly proud of the work the team have put into market the destination. Honorable Josephine Connolly, Minister of Tourism, said, To be nominated for such distinguished awards speaks to the world-class exceptional quality of our tourism product. This is a true testament of our government, stakeholders, and Turks and Caicos Islanders' dedication and commitment to the tourism industry. For this, I thank you. I would encourage everyone to vote for the Turks and Caicos Islands as these accolades are well-deserved. After the close of voting, the winners of each category in this year's program will be invited to attend the Red Carpet World Travel Awards Caribbean and North America Gala Ceremony, the region's premier VIP tourism gathering, which will take place on June 14, 2022 at Sandals in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Don't go anywhere, more news watch movie return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. The Ephesus and Blue Hill Seven-Day Adventist Church recently held a fundraising yard sale at the Felix Morley Community Center in Five Keys, and the reason behind it is guaranteed to warm hearts. Take a look. On Monday, March 14, 2022, the Ephesus and Blue Hill Seven-Day Adventist Church hosted a community fundraiser in form of a yard sale where they claim that everything must go. Happening here today is a yard sale. They Blue Hills SDA Youth Group and the Ephesus SDA Youth Group have put on this yard sale here today where we have received things from community, from our members that we have on sale. The fundraiser was organized and executed by the youth department at the church, who seemingly did a great job in creating good bargains and ensuring the day ran smoothly. The young people of the Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church there in Long Bay, the young people of the Blue Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church on Bay Road in Blue Hills. Retold News watched that the idea of a yard sale came about as to commemorate Global Youth Day, which is mainly celebrated by Seventh-day Adventists far and wide. Global Youth Day this year, March 19, is coming up this coming weekend, and a project has been put on by the two churches youth group. This project is really to assist a young man with a ram. And in order to get that ram built, we need funds. And therefore, we decided to put on this yard sale to acquire some funds so that we can get the ram built. We gather that the funds from the yard sale are being put towards building a ramp for a past student of the Inid Capron Primary, as well as the Clement Howell High School, who was unfortunately paralyzed from a car incident, which occurred some six years ago. The young people normally visit him to sing and pray with him. We take him out for ice cream and pizza. And at our last event out with him, he exclaimed that he really want to see the sunset. He haven't seen the sunset in six years. And in order for him to do that, we want him to have easy access out of his house. And therefore, right now, we have to lift him out or bring him back whenever we are doing so. So we want to build a ram so that he's able to assist himself 
in his wheelchair out of his house so he can basically sit and watch the sunset. The heartfelt story of the young man whose only wish after being paralyzed from the waist down was to watch the sunset reportedly attracted a crowd of persons to the yard sale who were all pleased to indulge in the bargains of the day, all for that worthy cause. The youth group of the Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Blue Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church, is here to assist other young people in one, becoming closer to Jesus Christ, two, being able to let the world know that Jesus Christ is alive and well. There is hope for our young people here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. There is hope for our young men, and we want to partner with the, our community in leading boys and girls to a closer walk with Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for your support, Five Keys. Thank you very much for your support, the, all our donors. We thank you very much and we look forward to the day when this project, of course, we are hoping that by March 19th, we will be able to hand over this project to this family. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your sports authority and weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providence Charlies, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your sports authority and weather forecast. The 11th annual wine cellar and golf fishing tournament took place on March 10th to March 13th and seemingly was once again a success. On Thursday, March 10th, the tournament kicked off with the Calcutta at Simone's Bar and Grill, where captains entered a friendly bidding war for rights for their respective vessels. In the following mornings, 15 boats took off from the leeward cut in a hurry to get to their favorite fishing spots. We gather that both fishing days went a bit rough and the fish that were caught were far less than those caught in the previous years, but the excitement remained the same. The fish auction followed and we understand that restorers and the general public had the opportunity to purchase fresh tuna, mahi-mahi, and wahoo at phenomenal prices. At the presentation ceremony, the excited winners of this year's competition celebrated with their anglers as trophies were hoisted, checks were received, and cheers of joy and amity filled the air. The fun continued into the night with the DJ playing all the favorites, and of course fish tills were shared about the one that got away. Sunday afternoon's golf tournament hosted at the Royal Turks and Caicos Golf Club was the highlight of the event for all golf enthusiasts an exciting round of 18-hole golf on a perfect day. The presentation ceremony followed where the top players were awarded with prizes that ranged from trophies and golf bags to fine champagne and gift certificates. The traditional raffle draw took place with three amazing prizes up for grabs, a Breitling Endurance Pro Watch from Jay's, dinner for four under the stars with complimentary wine at Bay Bistro, and dinner for four including a show, buffet, and disco at Club Med. The annual wine cellar golf and fishing tournament has donated $341,000 to various youth-oriented charities in the TCI so far, and we gather that when all tallies are done, they'll have a small ceremony for donating this year's proceeds to two of the chosen charities, the Edward Gartland Youth Center and the Caribbean Tournament of Champions Basketball. Here's your weather forecast for March 18th, 2022. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk on Friday, mostly sunny skies, high 80, low 76, winds east-southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Caicos, mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 76, winds east-southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, mostly sunny skies, high 83, low 75, winds east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. 
For Parrot and Pine Key, mostly sunny skies, high 82, low 76, winds east southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Providencial is mostly sunny skies, high 82, low 76, winds east southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset, sunrise 6.56 a.m., sunset 7 p.m., and for your high tides and low tides, high tides 8.29 a.m., 8.48 p.m., and low tides 2.19 a.m., 2.37 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to News Watch. As Education Week came to an end, the Seven Day Adventist Church of Blue Hills decided to commemorate their teachers with a celebration held at the church. Take a look. Teachers in the Turks and Caicos, like their counterparts around the world, are satisfied with their jobs, even while largely agreeing that society does not value their profession, a new study shows. In celebration of Teachers Day and in an attempt to make their teachers feel the appreciation they deserve, the Blue Hills Adventist Church held this celebration. This afternoon, we celebrated teachers, our teachers in this, our Blue Hills Church. For many years, the teachers have felt as though the church needed to do something to make them feel appreciated. And so as chair as the education department, we felt it was necessary to have a ceremony or a service planned just for them. As we all know that teamwork certainly makes the dream work, Guthrie explained to Newswatch that if it hadn't been for the cooperation and support from her peers, the event wouldn't have been made possible. We met as a team. There's a team of us who works. There's myself as a secretary. There's Jermaine Reed and Anne-Marie Campbell who work in this department with myself. We, considering that it was education week, we felt the urge to also do something as a church. And so we met. We planned and we executed. We were able to give each teacher a token through the kind support from the church and also from outside sponsorship. We've seen cries from teachers around the Turks and Caicos who claim to feel undervalued for their tireless and dedicated work. And Guthrie reminded Newswatch of the importance of dedicating this day just to teachers. Teacher's Day for me is very important. It's very necessary because we ought to show our teachers how much we appreciate them. So not only do we want the government to show appreciation to our teachers, but we also believe that as a church, we should do likewise. And so we were happy this evening to have planned this program just so that our teachers can feel special, appreciated and loved. The program for the appreciation service was full of impactful pieces, which reportedly the teachers were most thankful for. We were happy for the fact that we had our pastor, our executive secretary for the Turks and Caicos Islands Conference. We are happy that he was here to share a brief charge with our teachers, which I believe they most appreciated. We were also happy for the different songs that were rendered and the skits and the role play depicting the life of a teacher. We were happy for the music that were shared 
it was impacting and I know that for all the different events and activities that we had for them, we know that they appreciated same. Guthrie told Newswatch that as the profession of a teacher is the most important one, she hopes that celebrations such as these would continue and take place more often. Teachers are to be celebrated. Without our teachers, there would be no other profession. Oftentimes they go unappreciated and we don't want this to continue. So this evening is just the beginning of other great celebrations to come. Our teachers are important, they impact the life of our children, they impact our society, they impact our church. And as such, it is important for us to make them feel the appreciation that they ought to feel. The secretary revealed that two teachers were recognized for the work they've dedicated to the education field over the years. The education department identified two members who we felt needed to be recognized specially. Those two members were Elder Marjorie Bassett and Sister Emma Newman. Sister Bassett is a retired teacher. She had her own school. She's also a specialist teacher and we felt that she deserved to be honored. The other teacher that was honored was Sister Emma Newman, who started teaching at the tender age of 20, young adult. She, start, right, she started teaching at the age of 20. She's now 94 and she still has a school in operation. While she could not make it this afternoon, we wanted to honor her nonetheless. And we thank these two teachers for their visionary leadership in the field of education. Marjorie Bassett was one of the two teachers who was recognized as an honored vision for her love towards teaching, which has shown since the beginning of her career at the age of 15 years. Well, it feels great. It make me know that teachers are still important. And um, being in this thing from I was the age of 15 and um, to show appreciation today really means a lot to me. Finally, Guthrie elucidated on the church's plan to work at its best efforts to make teachers' appreciation even more special in the years to come. We want our teachers to know that we love them. We want them to know that we appreciate them. As a church, we want to continue this trend where during the week of edu during the education week, we honor our teachers because they deserve it. Oftentimes they are unappreciated, but we want them to know that the Blue Hills Seventh Day Adventist Church appreciates them. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Penales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.